Saturday Social is powered by EA Sports FIFA 23 with PlayStation. Uh, you're at the game. What was it like? Was there were a game? few fans that left early, I heard in commentary. Was one of them that left early, or were you there? <laughs> I, I, I never leave early. <laughs> he didn't like the person, did he? I never leave early, right? Uh, uh, listen, um, the, the thing is about it, right? I, I had totally mixed emotions um, in the game because, you know, it was a horrendous start, yeah. which we've done the last few games at the mm. Emirates. Um, but, I got, I got, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on the positives, right? You know what I mean? We were looking at a hum, absolute humiliation. I see you laughing there, Joe. A bit like your humiliation the other night. <laughs> you know what I mean? Similarities in it, because you were, strays. You were, <laughs> you were playing a team down near the bottom of the Spanish league, you know what I mean? So <laughs> it's a similar thing. But the difference was is that they showed a lot of fight to come back, right? You know what I mean? And we don't know at this stage, right? This is the positive on it, and I'm not being totally delusional because obviously it's points dropped yeah. right but we don't know how bad it is until we get to the end of the season it could be one of those games you look back and say well at least they retrieve something so let's see how it pans out but I, I, I love the fight that the team showed led by order guard bringing it back mm. and we could have won it you know what mm. i mean the mm. trossard hit the the crossbar and that but we are conceding too many goals um, we have dropped points in the last three games. But listen, sometimes when you win titles, you have to go and do it the hard way. It's not, it's not always going to be like, oh, game's in hand and, you know, yeah, we this amount of points. The points that we had, which was our little insurance policy, that's been used up now. Now we've got to go to the Etihad and get something. And I know that everybody's writing us off. You're writing us off. You're writing us off. Booby's writing we us off. We haven't spoken yet. <laughs> you <laughs> ain't got to speak. Well, on you that. ain't got to speak, right? And you, you as a Tottenham fan, I know you, you know, you, you, you were supporting Southampton last night. What I know that. Saying? I get it. I understand <laughs> it. But don't write us off yet. No. Do not write this team off yet. And as we said, uh, it is still in Arsenal's hands and Man City's yeah. hands. So it's a great title race. And we're going to get Booby still a few games soon to because well. his face is a picture there when Robbie was talking about it. I think there might be a little bit of disagreement because we're going to move it on. Uh, we're going to bring back our, our popular true or false strand yeah. because we've got a Man City and an Arsenal fan in the studio. We're going to theme it around those clubs. And I think this could get uh, a little bit heated. Right? Absolutely. We want to hear from Booby about we do. what Robbie had to say there. And we will straight away, actually. Let's get straight into it. Let's not mess yeah. about. We're reading out the first statement here. Get your paddles in hands, boys. True or false? Finishing second will still be a successful season for Arsenal. Ooh, what are you saying? True or false? Three, two, one, reveal. <laughs> OK, and obviously, let's go straight to Booby then, because we didn't get give you a chance to... Yeah, look, uh, Arsenal are meant to be the biggest club in London, third biggest club in the country, apparently. Eight points clear. They dropped points to Everton, Newcastle. They could have actually been 11 points clear. They got smashed at home to City. They got bullied by Erling Haaland. For me, you have to win that game. And if you're a big club... You take an eight-point advantage. Yeah, you drop a couple of points here and there, but not to Southampton at home, not to West Ham. Even the Liverpool result, they're there for the taking. Bournemouth just beat Liverpool a few weeks ago. For me, a big club takes the opportunity and wins the Premier League now. They're never going to be eight points clear ever again in the next 10 years to win a Premier League title. Ooh. So they bot do you think they bottled it? Of course. They're meant to be Arsenal fans... They think they're Leicester City with Vanieri. It's like a one in a million. They're meant to be a big club. They spent 300 million quid. <laughs> this is meant to be an infrastructure where they can go and win Premier League titles consistently. There's a reason they've not won anything for 20 years. <laughs> oh, Robbie? <laughs> There's a reason they've won something in the last 10 years, right? And it's in court at the moment, right? <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, that is the only reason because you barely existed before then. So, you know, you shouldn't even be talking on those things. Listen, what was the score when you played Southampton last year? Did you not draw to them as well? But we won the Premier League last season. You won the title, so that's what I mean. So don't write it off yet. Don't write it off yet. And at the start of this season, let's be real right now, nobody had Arsenal even in their top four predictions. No one when they were doing it, apart from Arsenal fans. Nobody said we'd get into the top four, right? So if we was to finish second this season, right, let's be real, if it weren't for us, we're the only team that's pushed City this year. City have been dominating this league for the last five, six years, right? The only team that's pushed them this year, not Liverpool, not Manchester United, not Chelsea, it's only been us, right? Okay. So for me, it would still be a successful season in that, you know, we, we, we did well and we've moved forward. We finished fifth last year. Obviously, we'd be disappointed because we didn't win the league, but, you know, but I, the I, I, I would, in, I would Robbie, still... For the whole season, eight points clear. Of course, of course. For the, for the, but, but then City were clear of us when they beat us. And then we pulled it back. So the season ain't over yet. Mm. I well, you know, because we've, we've drawn, we, we, we've had a little wobble over the last few games. Everybody thinks it's dead. It's not dead yet. 
They're still get, even next week, I feel, yeah. even if we were to go there and win, it's still not over. So even who, if they who, beat us, it's still not over. Who do you think over. is going to win the league this season then? Who do I think? I'm going to go Arsenal. I'm going to back my club. Love it. That sounded really? confident, didn't it? <laughs> I'm going to back my club. Yeah, yeah, I'm backing my club, man. I'm, from goalkeeper all the way through the spine of the Arsenal side, they're bottling it. Ramsdale choked, Partey choked, Jesus. There's a reason we sold him. With all, I love Jesus, but there's a reason. He's not a world-class striker. He never will be. He's, a one, tell me about bottle. He's a one in three. Stop talking about bottle. The whole bottle, of the right? Arsenal spine are nervous. That's what I'm stop say. telling me about bottle. You bottled the Champions League about the last five years. Yeah, you've never won a Champions League. Right, He's like, nor have you. And you, yeah. you, you, you're meant to you, be the biggest club in you London. You brought in your manager to win the Champions League, right? You're the you, biggest club in London. Not, Chelsea have won two well, Champions Well, you're not the biggest club in Manchester. And they, beat you, and they beat you in the Europa League. You're not even the biggest club in you Manchester. You lost to Chelsea in the Europa League final. Right, Four listen, you yeah. are bottle, you're talk, talking about, sitting here talking about bottle. Yeah. Have you or have you not bottled the Champions you, League last year? You bottled it in Paris. Barcelona. Did you bottle it Thierry last Henry. year? You, you bottled it last year. Thierry Henry crying, he's saying Ronaldinho. Oh, right, hold, hold on. That Did you bottle it last year? Did you bottle the meant, Champions League look, last City year? City don't. We don't think. Did you bottle it when you lost to Tottenham? We don't that think we're the biggest club in the world. Arsenal, you know, social media FC <laughs> think they're the biggest club <laughs> in the world. Social media FC. Arsenal think they're the biggest club in the world, and they've never won a European title. Chelsea, little Chelsea, West London. You know, they've gone to the European stage and won two Champions Leagues. We're bigger than you. Never won anything in Europe. That's why you hurt you. City fans don't care. Because with all the success they've had over the last few years, City fans you're still not recognised as a big club. You're still like, oh yeah, City. We're a big club. You're in a, you're in won, a, you're you're in a city. You've won more Premier League titles in the last five years than you've ever won in the Premier League. You're in era. a city Ooh. where you're still not the biggest club. Um, okay, we'll move it on. Uh, so I think I've said those are the thoughts of Lawrence and the mm. thoughts of Robbie. Uh, <laughs> some of those comments, but uh, very heated. Next one uh, brings us perfectly onto this one. Yeah. True or false? Arsenal winning the Premier League this season will be a greater achievement than Man City winning the Champions League this season. Let's have a look at your paddles. True or false? Perfect. <laughs> Robbie, we'll give you uh, the first... Because, as I said, you know what I mean, at the start of this season, we wasn't even in anybody's um, top four. So if we was to come and win the league this season, I think it would be such an unbelievable achievement, you know? Whereas if you look at, if you look at the Champions League, every, literally every season since Pep Guardiola has been there, they're the favourites to win it. They were the favourites at the start of this season. They were the favourites last season. The season. That's why I said they, they bottled it literally every season, right? But, <laughs> no, you were the favourites no, to I'll win. You this, were you the favourites to win the Champions League this season? Yeah, but it's not the same. It's not the same. Oh, it's not the same? It's not the same. The Champions, <laughs> League, the Champions League's hard. Alex Ferguson, Man United, he had 25 years with some of the greatest players of all time. He won two Champions Leagues in his time there. He's, one, he's the greatest manager of all time, in my opinion. So the Champions League's very hard. Arsenal spent more than any other club in the last two summer transfer windows. Again, spending met, you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. You spent more than you're Man City in the last two years. You've signed Zinchenko, <laughs> Jesus, players with actual winning experience, unlike the Arsenal squad before those guys joined. And uh, you got the audacity you, you, to talk you about spending. You wouldn't even is, be here. You this wouldn't is be the level here. of mediocrity Arsenal are living at. They think they're lesser City. They're lucky to be winning a Premier League the first in 20 years. It's low-level yeah, mentality listen, movie, from Arsenal. Right? You'd be underdogs today to Sheffield United had that the owners of your club. <laughs> yeah? We were, we, were right? prim, we were a Premier League club. You, 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 were, you were in the third division of football. <laughs> Right, you're lucky those guys turned up, right, and brought the money into your club. How can you talk about that? You're the favourites to win the Champions League at the start of this season. We weren't. We weren't even, as I said, considered for that. Surely, that would be a better. But do you not agree the Champions League? Well, why is Ferguson only won two? You know what? The Champions League, the, the semi, one of the semi-finals at the moment is Inter Milan versus yeah. AC Milan. This, this season, you're right. You know what I mean, yeah. Uh, you, yeah, you they're can, in the other half. They've th got to play this relative. season. Just we, played Bayern Munich. Yeah. To be fair to Man City. Yeah, but I'm saying, yeah. you know, you know the strange thing about it, right? Cup competitions, it's hard to work out because you know you've got Napoli who's absolutely smashing their league. Mm. They're out of the Champions League because mm. it's a little one-off game against AC Milan, and AC Milan could go on and win the Champions League and be considered the best team in Europe. It's, I don't know. It's, it's kind of harder to probably to win your league, isn't it? Well, that, did, that split opinion. Let's, I think this next one will as well. True or false, Martin Erdegaard is having a better season than Kevin De Bruyne. Now, these two players have been compared consistently throughout the season. Booby's not happy with this one. Booby's not happy He's at all. He's writing these questions, lads. <laughs> Honest to God. Right, let's reveal your answers then. Martin Erdegaard is having a better season than KDB. True or false? You have to think about it, though. <laughs> I, I did have to think about it because you know, I try to be honest. Something what, that's playing in the Europa League. Something that's not always uh, <laughs> on display in Manchester, your side. But um, because, you know what I mean, De Bruyne has been brilliant this season. He has, yeah. but he did get off to quite a slow start. You must admit that. Whereas I'd say Odegaard has been consistent all season. He's, he's been excellent mm. the whole season. So that's why it's a difficult one for me because, I mean, even last night, 
Who led the fight back for Arsenal? Martin Odegaard scores. He's been scoring a lot of goals as well this season. He's the captain for the first time this season. The team's at the top of the league. I think he's been brilliant this season, but obviously... You know, I've got a lot of respect for De Bruyne. He's, 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 and he's been his partnership with um, Haaland has been exceptional. You know, so mm. it's been unbelievable. But I'd, I'd say for the, I'm just going off the whole season so far. Yeah, probably I'd, I'd go Do slightly you? Odegaard. Well, De Bruyne's doing it in the Champions League. Odegaard's doing it on a Thursday night in the Europa League. You know, they, they're not doing anything in any cup competition. With all due respect, you know, De Bruyne's doing it in multiple competitions. What about the, what about the Premier League? De Bruyne's League? influencing games against Bayern Munich in the quarterfinal of the Champions League. I still think he's actually had an amazing season in the Premier League. His numbers are fantastic in terms but of... But he did start assists. slowly, didn't he? He did start slowly. Assists. I think you could say Odegaard's had a purple patch higher than kind consistent. of De Bruyne. But I'd, I'd take De Bruyne every day of the week. In that terms wasn't of a question. A one-off game, especially in the run-in. This question. time last season, he scored a load against Wolves away. That Unbelievable. Wasn't he's got the experience. He's got a last season now. This they season, asked about this season. Yeah, his numbers are better than Odegaard. This season. He's got better quality than Odegaard. <laughs> he he's got more better goals experience. than Odegaard. He hasn't scored more. It's not about goals. He's, got, he's, got, he's, he's, he's providing... He's got 15 assists, though. Yeah. Odegaard, yeah. Odegaard, yeah. Odegaard yeah. 12 goals and 7 assists for Odegaard. De Bruyne, 5 goals and 15 assists. Yeah, but how many goals? It's not about goals. It's not about we've got Erling Haaland up front. What's the goal contribution then when you add it all up? I don't know. 20 goal contributions from KDB in the league. This is only an early guard 19. So he's got more goal contributions. Not much. And he's got Haaland in front of him. He's playing for a treble. I'm going with my boy, man. I'm going with all the guys. He's been consistent all season. OK, they're not going to agree on that one, but will they agree on the next one? True or false, Rodri is a better defensive midfielder than Thomas Partey. Let's have a look at your paddles. What are you saying? Come on, be real. Be real. That's it. An agreement. An agreement. <laughs> a rare agreement. Wow. Come on. I, I, I'm just only just been... Ba- maybe I'm basing that too much off of the last two games because Partey's been brilliant for us this season, but the last couple of games, you know I mean? He's been a, a bit of... Fo- I thought he's a bit of fault last You both night. went false, by the way, for this, which means that you think Thomas Partey's a better defensive midfielder. You put the false oh, paddle up. Oh, sorry, put, no, you mean true? I, I think Rodri's at much, much higher level. Sorry. I, the, I, the way I, the question I, was worded... I'd say, I'd say this season... You'd have to say Rodri. So you're going true. Yeah, sorry. we're both yeah. true. Sorry, we're both true. We'll, we'll correct that. Error with the paddles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There we go. No, I, I think the big thing for a defensive midfielder, you've got to go through 90% of the season without getting recognised of making a mistake. You've got to just grind through games casual. Look at Sergio Busquets at Barcelona. You can't really name a mistake. Yeah. You're seeing Thomas Partey. All he's got to do is control the ball against Declan Rice, shield the ball, play it simple. That was one mistake, that's though. What, yeah, that's, but it, Rodri it, made it's, no it's, mistakes this season. It's one mistake if Aguero blazes it over against QPR, we don't win the Premier League title. Has Rodri, made, has Rodri made no mistakes I don't think... I can't, can you name me a mistake he's made in the Premier League title race, even the last three or four years? To be honest, people don't really watch much of your games, you know? So I don't know. Why? I think he's remember. operating at a high level. He scored a goal against... <laughs> Chelsea. He scored a goal against game against Spurs, I think, Rodri. Ooh, there you go. I can't remember. I can't remember that. What did he do? What did he do in that? Let's go, to, to remember. let's go to the next one because I want to get one more in in this section. Uh, this is true or false. The atmosphere is better at the Etihad than the Emirates. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> what, what, what did it you is. put for that? True. The atmosphere at Because the it's all Etihad. relative, lads. It's all, you know, uh, is there a better atmosphere at Brentford <laughs> Stadium or Wembley? You know, some, not every stadium is the <laughs> oh, same oh, okay, size. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> You'll need that. They've, You'll got, need they've that. got a ring in the middle of the Emirates, right? Yeah. Honestly, they've got a ring of corporate and it already looks outdated. Spurs <laughs> Stadium down the road is ten times. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Ten times the stadium. That's compared to corporate. Have you been to the National go. Library, King's Cross, the National Library of this country? <laughs> I can't say I have. There's more atmosphere in the National <laughs> Library than Emirates. I've been to the Emirates. I've nearly fell asleep. And I love football, lads. I'm on the show with you. I've fell asleep at the Emirates. Honestly, I don't stop. I've asleep at the Emirates. Let me just say. Say, yeah. Don't take it from me. Yeah. <laughs> Ask your manager who said the place is dead. Your own manager said the atmosphere when did you say that? earlier on in the season. I don't he remember said, that. He said the atmosphere, <laughs> he tried to rally you like he goes, oh, he goes, you, you can't remember when he said he did if, say this. If you guys don't get behind us, you know what I mean? It's dead. Yeah. Ferguson that did it. That stadium is dead. Did it. Is that did, atmosphere? Did I take a come so, Listen, listen, you yeah. know it's true. Your own manager said. Yeah. That stadium, that atmosphere in there is dead. What about Arteta? Did he talk dead. about the fans that were all leaving when you were getting smashed by Southampton Who in 85 that? minutes? Who said that? I'm saying Arteta should have come out and, and recognised. Did Arteta never came out and said that? All fans were desperate I, to no, get on the tube. I was at the game. Go and get their gales, the their gales coffee I've in the morning you, after. <laughs> your own North manager, London. right? As I said, I don't need to say nothing. Your own manager yeah. said what every fan in football knows yeah. is that the Etihad... You want a title race and all your fans are leaving. All your fans are leaving. Their deadly stadium. They should put the running track back in there, man. Right, we're going to get to the last you one. You did your marathon there. We're gonna... <laughs> <laughs> good. Clever. Uh, true or false, Sergio Aguero has a greater Premier League legacy Ooh. than Thierry Henry. It's our last one. What are you saying? 
Sticking with the theme, <laughs> disagreement everywhere. Robbie, you go first. Thierry Henry. Yeah. <laughs> Thierry Henry is like, almost like when you talk about the Premier League, go anywhere around the world, say, Premier League, Thierry Henry. Yeah, I mean, he was, it wasn't just the amount of goals he scored. It's the way he did it, the style, the panache. That's why the Premier League sells all around the world. He's one of the big reasons for it, right? Come on. Come on. Yeah, but Aguero scored the, the most iconic goal in Premier League history. For you guys, yeah. He won more... I think if we're talking about football as a sport in terms of the actual silverware in the mm. Premier League, he's won more Premier Leagues than, than Henri. Henri Double the, the whole season unbeaten with the Invincibles. Yeah, I'd take... Yeah, Aguero yeah, got yeah, 100 yeah. points. 100 points more important than Invincibles. Nobody cares about that. It oh, does. Oh, so it's, Aguero's if a great offered, player. If you offered a relegation cannot... side more, more points or being invincible, you can be invincible go and anywhere, get relegated. Go anywhere in the world. A season. Go <laughs> anywhere in the world, right? Anywhere around this country, anywhere around the world, yeah. and say the two names, right? And see who would get the most response. I think I'd get more response saying Aguero for me. <laughs> I, I, I do. I, I think the, well, you're deluded, If we just come on. <laughs> It's the most Sorry, iconic mate. goal in the history of Premier League I know football. you've been training a lot. And by the way... It's taken a lot out of you. Let's <laughs> get a bit of water into you. By the you. way, Henri never scored big goals. I'm thinking of the... He scored in the Champions League <laughs> He never final. scored big goals. Didn't score in the, did he, he score he, he goals? Scored no cup final goals for Arsenal. He Zero scored, cup final We're not final talking goal. about... We're talking about... They said the Premier League. Okay. Again, you're trying to divert. But, OK, we'll talk about the QPR right? goal. Did Henri score you're a goal at the same level of the QPR you goal? Been, of... According to your theory, what you said earlier, when you base it off of Southampton, you should be smashing teams like QPR, isn't it? OK, we're not going to agree. <laughs> <laughs> it's thoroughly entertaining. Uh, let us know who you think came out on top in that. I don't know. Oof. Don't know.